Hello everybody, Mr. E here, and welcome to another episode of Mr. E Talks Movies, a series where I go over the various movies that I've seen, and I go over and give my own opinions about them. As always guys, I'd like to thank you all for the support that I've been getting for this channel, uh, and uh, m make sure you remember to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any more videos, and also feel free to like and comment on the video, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if there's any movies you'd like me to go over next. And so, without further ado, let's get started. At long last, Halloween is here. A time of, I don't know, going around, can candy, lots of spooky stuff, and putting on costumes. I honestly can't wait to get in on the Halloween action myself. I've got a, I bought a Charlie Chaplin costume off of the internet, and I'm gonna take it with me, wear it to tomorrow's game, and you know any other Halloween parties I'm gonna crash. And so yeah, I thought since it's Halloween, I thought I'd do a, I thought I'd do a video of a of a spooky movie. How'd you guys like to see me talk about the first Halloween movie in honor of the new Halloween movie that just came out? Well, you can't forget it because I hate horror movies. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I made it very clear in my first episode that I don't generally like horror movies because I'm, I'm too big of a wuss. So, yeah, but, yeah, but you're like, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Mr. E, if you don't, if you, you're too big of a wuss to do horror movies, then what are you going to do for Halloween instead? Well, I'm glad you asked because for today's episode, I'm going to be going over a crap cake. Horror comedy, emphasis on the comedy, is a kind of a light-hearted, spooky Halloween movie for, you know, if you're a, for wussies like myself. And so yeah, the one I'm going to be going over is one that I highly doubt you'll recognize. It's a film called Transylvania 65000, released in the mid, released somewhere in the 80s. Uh, yeah, this movie ended up being a huge plot, not a lot of... Not a lot of folks like this movie, but is it for a good reason? Let's find out. Oh, and uh, one more thing I should point out. Uh, a little bit of a background about this movie. Apparently back in the 80s, there was a, the chemical company Doe made a, made a bunch of money from, I don't know, handling toxic chemicals in the, in the Yugoslavia during the 80s, but they couldn't get it out of the country because of local laws. And so they made this movie, they, kind of helped make this movie as a front to get the money out to, I don't know, move the money over to the U.S. So yeah, this whole movie was used as a way to get corporate money overseas. So, yeah, this should be interesting. So, let's get started. Alright, so, Transylvania 65000 starts off with a, a short little video made by, made by some guy. It's uh, basically just about a couple of guys looking around through an old cathedral, but then all of a sudden Frankenstein shows up and attacks them, and then they're like, oh, oh no, oh no, it's Frankenstein, he's back, oh no, run for your lives. Yeah, the overall video is a, it's a very terrible quality. It looks like it was put together by a bunch of, by a bunch of high school students. Anyway, the whole thing was, uh, that whole, that part right there was, uh, made for a, a news, I don't know, newspaper thing. Anyway, we're introduced to... We're introduced to two reporters. The first one's name is Jack Harrison, played by Jeff Goldblum. Love the guy, by the way. And the other one is Gil Turner, played by Ed Begley Jr. So yeah, basically you got these two reporters talking to, talking to their boss, who also just so happens to be Gil's father. Uh, basically, the the boss has heard has caught wind of a few rumors circling around the old Transylvania, where the where you know Frankenstein took place, and uh, apparently he got some rumors saying that Frankenstein is somehow back from the dead and, caught, and potentially causing mayhem, even though. Frankenstein was never really a thing to begin with. It was just fiction, but 
you know, of course, Jack and Gil are there, are there, and they're like, "What? What are you? What are you thinking about this? Like this? This doesn't seem that good." But then, yeah, you know, as it turns out, the newspaper company that they work at is, uh, I don't know, relies on b stories like this one to kind of entertain the the viewers. Anyway, so here's here's the, here's the gist: the boss wants. Jack and Gil to fly over to Transylvania to get a good story on Frankenstein's return. Yeah. Yeah, basically he's like, yeah, I want you out. Basically he was like, yeah, I want the two of you to go to Transylvania and give me a good story on Frankenstein's return. And it, it better be, it better have Frankenstein, because if I come back and if you don't have Frankenstein, your asses will fly it. It's like I don't care if one of you is my son. You gotta, you you gotta give me Frankenstein, or, or you're out of the job. After that, we get uh, to Jack and Gil. They arrive at Transylvania, and uh, you know, despite Transylvania's reputation for being home to, I don't know, the various ghoulish stories you often hear on Halloween, that uh, you know, the place is actually actually looks pretty nice. Jack is, I don't know, getting his flirt on with one of the local tourists. Uh, Jack and Gil are later introduced to, I don't know, first of all, the, the girl that, you know, Jack was flirting with. Her name is uh, Elizabeth Ellison, a, a single mom. And then we're also introduced to the Pescu, Transylvania's mayor, played by Jeffrey Jones. You may recognize for his roles in films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Beetlejuice. They, they get acquainted there. Lepescu kind of takes Jack and Gil to a to a, to a little to a little place for them to stay for a little bit while they look for the Frankenstein story. And speaking of Frankenstein, you got you, you got Gil. He's at the he's at a hotel lobby talking with one of the guys and he's like yeah I've heard I'm looking for someone uh you know you have the he mentions that he's looking for Frankenstein but then everyone and uh, but then everyone in the hotel starts laughing their asses off and so yeah they're pretty yeah Jack and Gil are both pretty embarrassed yeah you got then you got Jack and Gil they're kind of going through Transylvania where they go to the place where they're supposed to stay, which is, you get this, Transylvania Castle, which is apparently being remodeled into a hotel. Yeah, there's a big sign that says opening soon, and there's also little signs in the doors that have like American Express and MasterCard. And, yeah, that's a little, a little dumb joke there. Anyway, Jack and Gil knock on the door, and they're greeted by one of the castle's butlers, whose name is Theos, and he's played by Michael Richards, a.k.a. Kramer from Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah this is already a pretty good start. We got, we got, we got Jeff Goldblum, we got the the principal from Ferris Bueller, and we got Kramer from Seinfeld. I mean, this movie's got everybody. This movie has to be good, right? Wrong. Yeah, one thing I can mention about Theos is that he's also a comedian in training. Yeah, throughout the movie, you often see you often see Theos doing lots of crazy, lots of crazy slapstick jokes. To, I don't know, impress Jack and Gil, but a lot of them don't really work out pretty well. So, yeah, despite that, Phaos is like one of my favorite characters in the movie. Yeah, the first thing Phaos does, comedy wise, is that he has a tiny doll of himself at the door and he's like puppeting him doing stuff and he's like, wee, wee, wee. and then he's like, hey, what are you doing? Stop that, stop that, you. <laughs> you know? You got Jack and Gil, they're inside the castle, and, uh, and uh, Lepescu is also there. He's, they're, having, they're having lunch, and we're introduced to a couple more characters. There's, there's Radu, another butler, 
and that. And then there's Loopy, a maid, played by Carol Kane, who had appearances in The Princess Bride and Scrooge. And so, yeah, they have Lapu and Radu and Loopy are, of course, are married, and there's a lot of comedic exchanges between the two, but a lot of them, yeah, it, it kind of goes on for a while. It gets stale really quick. But, you know, I love their chemistry. You know, you got, you got Radu just trying to do his job, and then Carol's there, like, trying to be all supportive, and he's like, like being all lovey-dovey and all that, and, yeah, and Radu's like, can you, can you, like, I don't know, leave me alone or something, I'm trying to get my job done. <laughs> After a while, Lepescu leaves, and, uh, and kind of just leaves Gil and, Gil and Jack to, I don't know, explore the town. Jack, Jack decides to stick around in the, to uh, stick around in the castle, and that, uh, you know, Gail is starting to, I don't know, investigate Frankenstein by going to the, by going to an abandoned chapel. So yeah, Gil visits the abandoned chapel, but he doesn't really find anything, but he does meet the town's police inspector. I forget his name. I didn't, I didn't put it in the thing here. So yeah, the inspector's there and he's like, hey man, how, how you doing? Man, nice to meet you. Hey, listen, you're not doing anything crazy, are you? Because I'm gonna have to put you down if, if you are. And he's like, no nah, man, I'm good. I'm, I'm leaving. And so yeah, Gil leaves the chapel leaving the inspector, and uh, Lepescu is kind of snooping there too, which means the two of them are planning something, but I'm not really sure about, we're not really sure about that yet, so. You got Jack and Gil, they're, they're in the castle trying to discuss stuff, and Gil's talking to Jack, and he's like, yeah, man, I'm trying, I was kind of getting around the castle, and the inspector showed up out of nowhere, and he, I don't know, I think it was going to kill me or something, I don't know. Clearly something's going on. And the, yeah. But then later we get Feos. He comes up with a letter and a, a fake hand. You know, he has the hand in the letter, and when they take the letter, the hand falls off, and they're like, Ooh! and then they're like, eh? And then he's like, Eh, eh, what did you say? Was it funny? Uh, anyway, the letter basically just tells that tells them that if they want to find Frankenstein, they better visit an old lady they saw in town earlier. It's a uh, Madame Morovia, a uh, fortune teller. So anyway, Jack and Gil visit the little fortune teller, and uh, she she's kind of just pondering the orb. Saying, saying stuff, and uh, she says Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein's somewhere involved in this. And then she also mentions a wolf man, and they're like, a wolf man. This is this is getting interesting. Uh, yeah. But then she's like, yeah, the wolf man is my is my is my son. Yeah, he looks like a he acts like a man. Sure, but when the full moon comes up, he becomes an animal. Yeah, that night you got Jack and Gil there waiting outside a trailer where, I don't know, the fortune teller's son probably, I don't know, is there. And then, I don't know, he he does come out. He sees the full moon and he's like, oof. And then he starts leaving in a hurry. And then they're like, ooh, that, that means he's all, he, he looked at the full moon. That means he's a werewolf. We got to follow him. And so they do follow him. And, uh. Yeah, they hear a lot of scrounge around, lots of growling from behind bushes, and they they look and uh, and then to their surprise, they they don't find a wolf man, but you know they find the guy that they were following. Apparently, he was kind of in the middle of doing a thing with a girl in the woods. And it's like, oh my man, I thought we were, I thought we were looking for an animal, and the lady's like, we were. He is an animal, and then, you know, I'm like, yeah, he's he is an animal, all right. Wink, wink. Yeah, later we get we get a scene with a 
I don't know, Jack and Elizabeth, they, they, they land a date, good for them. And that night, sometime, sometime after the date, you get, you get Gil, he's, he's kind of sleeping in his room, in the bed, fast asleep. But then, uh, yeah, this is interesting. Uh, this should be interesting. Uh, while he's sleeping, a vampire lady shows up. She's played by Gina Davis. Now we got a vamp we got a vampire in this. This is getting good. So anyway, the vampiress sees Gil and she tries to, I don't know, bite him, bite him or something, but then but then when Gil, I don't know, feels feels something, he's like, oh, oh, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? And he starts freaking he starts freaking out and then and then Jack's there and he's like, hey, hey man, come 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 the out. What's what's going on? And it's like, it's, he's like, I don't know, I was sleeping, I, I, I don't know, I felt something, I felt something come near me. It was, it was weird. Yeah, the vampire, the vampire lady's gone. Uh, yeah, the next morning, they, Jack and Gil, they kind of get a plan figured out. Uh, they kind of get a, a plan figured out. Apparently, while Gil, Gil was reading the paper, reading the local papers, they they get a name, Doctor Malavakwa, uh, a, a doctor who lost his medical license and is now currently in the Transylvania's sanatorium, the mental ward, basically. And so yeah, they think it might be a, Jack and Gil think it may be a good idea to I don't know check this place out, see if they can find this doctor and figure out what's going on. Oh yeah, and there's a there's another scene when they go in and figure stuff out. Gil leaves and you got Feos, he has a banana peel, he's like, hey man, look at this. Whoops! Eh? Eh? Pretty funny, right? <laughs> Where you got Jack and Gil, they're kind of out doing their thing. Redu and Luffy are Kind of cleaning, cleaning the place, being, I don't know, an, I don't know, being an agitated couple or whatever. Like what I explained earlier. And uh, you got the Pescu, you know, the mayor, he's kind of snooping around the, their rooms and he finds the, the videotape that was at the beginning of the movie. You, you know, the crappy one that I said looked like it was put together by a bunch of high school kids. Jack and Gil, they arrive at the sanatorium. Uh, they somehow, they get a plan, and uh, Gil successfully makes it into the sanatorium by, I don't know, comedic jokes. They put the thing on, they put like a robe on Gil, and then as he's climbing in, Jack's like, hey, uh, there's a person trying to get out, person trying to get out. And they're like, hey, man, what are you, do what are you doing trying to sneak out? Get, get, get back to work. And so yeah, Gil's kind of kind of starting sneaking around, and then we're and so yeah, of course, while that's happening, you got Lepescu and the inspector. They look at the tape and they're like, "Yeah, yeah, this thing sucks. We get, we gotta destroy this, and it's kind of screwing up with our plants or whatever." Yeah, whatever they're hiding, it's gonna get revealed soon, and. Uh, while Gil's snooping around, we're finally introduced to the Malavakwa guy, or I'm, I'm just gonna call him Mal. So yeah, you got Mal. He's sitting at his office. He's not. A, he's not a patient. He's just, he just works there, and uh, he's talking with Lepescu and the inspector, and he's like, "And and man, something like really weird is going on. You you wouldn't have to know anything about it, would you?" And they're like, and then Mal's like. Nah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You can, you, you can go about their business. But then after that, you get. But then after that, you get a. Uh, after Lopescu and the inspector leave, you got a. Uh, Mal, he goes on the phone and he calls, and he calls Feos, and uh, he, he's like. Hey, it fails. Good to see you. Hey, listen, can you get can you get Redu on the phone? Thank you. Hey, Redu, good to see you. 
Uh, uh, listen, I want you to uh, get the lab ready. I'll, I'll meet you there. All right. All right. See ya. Bye. So yeah, obviously, Malavak was at it, uh, hiding something. Uh, so yeah, there's not really much they can they can do at that moment. So Gil sneaks out of the, the sanatorium. Like you, you got Jack still. He's outside at the entrance, and then. And he's like, come on, man, I can't just walk out the front gate. The person at the front knows me or something, like he was snooping around earlier. And as he's trying to crawl over the gate, Jack's like, hey, there's a there's a person trying to get in, person trying to get in. And the guard's like, hey, man, what are, you, what are you doing? I told you not to be in here. You got get, 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 get the out, the out right now. You got Lepescu and the inspector. I don't know. Uh, apparently Mal's telling them that I don't Tell them a thing. I kind of forget this part, but the next thing we know, we got Lepescu and the police kind of digging up a grave of a person, trying to, I don't know, see if, I don't know, it's, I don't know, what's that? Anyway, they go to a coffin, and you know, you know what they find in there? A sex doll. So, yeah, maybe that whole thing was meant to be a distraction to, I don't know, get, to, I don't know, get, get them out of Malbaqua's way or whatever. And we get to a little bit later. Uh you got you got Gil, he's kind of looking around the castle trying to find some uh, trying to find the secret lab that was mentioned. Uh Jack's doing something too, but I don't know. Uh yeah you got Gil, he's looking around in the study and Guess who comes up through a secret passageway? The vampire lady from earlier. Yeah, you, you know, Gina Davis's character. Anyway, she's apparently her name is Odette, and uh, yeah, she's a she's a vampire, basically. But yeah, she's Yeah, but the thing about her is that she's I don't <laughs> this is kind of this is kind of weird. She's very horny. But, Basically, she's, he, he's, she's after, she's, you know, she has his, she has her eyes on Gil for some reason, and then, and then she's like, it's kind of weird to explain. All I know is, is that the vampire lady named Odette has, kind of has the hots for Gil, and then Gil's like, hey, man, hey, look, I'm not ready for, you know, that kind of relationship quite yet. I mean, I'm flattered, but... Yeah, after a while, Odette vanishes again, and, uh, anyway, you got Radu, Loopy, and now, now you got Mal. They meet up at the castle, and they go to a secret lab under a dried-up water bridge. Yeah, they go to a secret passage at the, like, the secret basement of the castle, and, uh, they kind of get their lab gear ready to, I don't know, get stuff in order, and... This is kind of weird. As soon as Mal steps into the lab, he he, he starts going like, <sighs> oh, It's good to be home. It's good to be home. Yeah, and he starts going around. See this? It's like, oh, It's so good to be back here with all this crazy, crazy contraptions and uh, and mice and mice in cages. Some of them are probably dead. I don't really care, but all that matters is that I'm back. All right, where's my specimens? Um, I don't know his. Yeah, apparently he has tests. Of, he has a bunch of I don't know subjects or whatever people he's been experimenting on, including I don't know a bunch of, including Odette. Yeah, Odette's one of them. Also the also a bunch of other characters, including a, including the guy that's supposed to be Frankenstein, and then he's like, well, what's going on? I, I want I want to find these. Guys that have escaped from my lab. I want you to, I don't know, find this place. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure, I'm gonna figure the, the out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, and you, you have to get this place in tip top shape. All right. And so yeah, you got Radu and Loopy. They're kind of cleaning up the place, and then and then Mal kind of steps back, and he's like, hey, "Hey man, I know you've been working really hard. Take it, take it easy. Here, have a coffee break." And then, and then. And he accidentally steps back and he goes, What the? What are you doing? Work, sleep, sleeping on the god job. Get back to work. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 
It's kind of weird how that works. See, you get you got the scientist, and he's like, "Hey man, how you do? Hey man, how you doing? Yeah, it's a nice day, huh? Did you like the glass of water?" Fuck you! So yeah, long story short, all of Mal's subjects have escaped, and that. Oh yeah, one thing I should mention. Well, yeah, while Mao was in the lab, apparently, apparently he has a he has a mummy in a coffin. Yeah, it's the only it's the only one of his subjects that haven't escaped because I don't know he's been he's been in the thing in bandages for a while, and then she's like, oh, but don't worry, everything will be explained shortly. And uh, you got Jack and Elizabeth; they're having a picnic, and uh, of course. Uh, you got Elizabeth's daughter, Laura. She she wanders off, and uh, yeah, Elizabeth tries to find find her. But yeah, while that's happening, Gil comes back, and and, and, and Gil meets Jack, and he's like, hey, "Man, you, you're not gonna believe this. The vampire lady came back, and I don't know. She, she's after me sexually. I mean, and uh, yeah, you got the the two of them argue, and they they fight for a bit, but uh, yeah, while well, that's happening, you got you got Laura, you know Elizabeth's daughter, kind of just wandering, doing her own thing, and uh, guess who's guess who guess who she meets? Frankenstein. Yeah, and uh, basically, basically, Frankenstein kind of just runs off with her, and uh, so yeah, Elizabeth, of course, is having a panic because her daughter's missing. And then they go, go, go back. He, she goes back to Jack and Gil, and she's like, eh, "We we have a we have a we have a problem. Laura is missing. We have we have to find her." And so they kind of go around. Elizabeth goes to the police to I don't know get a search party going. And uh, yeah, this is kind of weird. You got the basically you got the the three the Jack and Gil. They're kind of just looking through the forest trying to find Laura, but uh, yeah, soon behold that they meet the a bunch of guys that, I don't know, are kind of weird, and uh, Gil's, Gil's kind of cl climbing a tree at one point, kind of looking around, and they didn't see anything, and then, but then as he's climbing down, he bumps into Frankenstein, and he's like, eh, let's go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he starts he starts freaking out because he's face to face with Frankenstein and he freaks out. He's in the he's in the swamp, of course, and he's kind of sitting by the water, saying like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe it! That's this Frankenstein!" But then from the water, you got a hand. He comes up and he he kind of just grabs Gil by the crotch and he's like, "Oh my gosh!" And then, uh, He's, so yeah, you got Gil, he's freaking out because he just met Frankenstein and some, some other dude. Uh, yeah, but that's not important. But then he, uh, then you got Jack, he's kind of walking through the forest, and guess who he meets? A wolf man! Or, uh, I, I don't really think that's a wolf man. He looks, he looks like Chewbacca in a, in a sweater and jeans, basically, in the, Basically, they have a bit of a tussle, and uh, Gil kind of meets up with Jack, and they they have a they kind of have that thing together. Where they had to go up against the Wolfman, but basically he knocks Jack out, and he, Wolfman kind of like heads back to the lab, carrying Gil on his back. And so, but yeah, the cops show up, you know, the inspector and the pescu, and then. Yeah, basically they're kind of. Yeah, basically the police force is kind of pissed at Jack for I don't know interfering with their whatever. Uh, but long story short, Jack gets arrested and then now he's in jail. And then you got Elizabeth. She's at the police station talking with the mayor and the with the mayor and the inspector. And then. She, She's and then she's like, "Hey, come on, come on, man! We gotta get, we gotta find my daughter. She's she's still missing." But then, uh, yeah, apparently the 
Aaron Leah Lopescu and the Inspector don't really didn't really give a crap because they're more focused on the wine festival that's happening tonight. Yeah, there's a wine festival, so that should be interesting. The wolf the wolf man basically takes Gil back to the lab. They have him strapped in a chair. You got Mal there and Rado and Loopy are there and uh, Apparently the guy from the swamp is there too. He, he, apparently he's like a he's like a twisted guy with like a little limb deformity or whatever. And then he's like, "Yeah, this this guy's pretty good. Why do uh, I I don't know?" He, and Wolfman's like, "I don't know. We could be on the back." And then he's like, "Get we get back in the cell." And he's like, "All right, all right, fine." Oh, Dad's there too, and the twisted guy gets in his cell. And, uh, yeah, basically everyone's accounted for, except for Frankenstein, who apparently goes by the, uh, who apparently has, goes by the name Hunyadi. That's a, that's a weird name. Mal is, Mal eventually tells Radu and Loopy to find Hunyadi and bring him back into the lab. And so, yeah, you get... You get Jack, he's in the jail cell, the cop's there, and, uh, yeah, apparently Elizabeth knocks the cop out by breaking a wine, wine bottle on him and uh, knocking him out, and they, basically, she breaks, she breaks Jack out of prison, so, that should be, that's very interesting, and, uh, so yeah, there's no cop, there's no cops on duty at the moment because of the wine festival's going on. You got people drinking wine and all that. Hold on. Okay. So after, after Jack leaves jail, he goes back to the fortune teller from earlier, kind of talking to her, saying like, hey, ma'am, you were you are right about the wolf, wolf man, sort of, but yeah, he, you know, he turned out to be a, I don't know, a sex machine or something. And it's like, yeah, the, the guy you met earlier, uh, Fortune tells like, yeah, the guy you met earlier was was my husband. That the wolf, the guy that you know is a wolf is my is my son. And uh, basically, she tells Jack where the lab is under the castle, like I like I previously mentioned. And uh, so yeah, while that's happening, you got Radu and Loopy. They find they find Hunyadi in an old shed, and uh, he's playing cards with Laura. So yeah, you got Radu and Loopy. They work together to kind of knock out Hunyadi and take him back into the lab. So yeah, now we have all the all the other ghoulish weirdos, I guess, sitting around at the lab. Gil's kind of at the strapped in the table, and he's like, "Hey, hey what's, what's going on? Why why am I strapped here?" And it's like, "Oh, don't worry, we we." We just, I don't know, sampled your blood or something like that. Yeah, while they're in the lab, Jack shows up and he, it kind of causes a ruckus. Basic, basically, everyone's just chasing each other through the lab. The doctor's kind of like, what, what's going on here? Why, what, what's, what's going on? And then, I don't know, it's kind of weird. They get, I don't know, they get Jack out of his out of the table, and, uh, I don't know, I don't know, everyone gets, everyone gets out of their cells, but, I don't know, everyone's just, no, no, nothing happens. Hunyadi, however, does escape from all the chaos with Laura, and, uh, and basically, Hunyadi's basically carrying her over to the town where the wine festival is being, is taking place, and you got Jack and Mal, they're, they're kind of fighting in the lab, and then they're like, "Hey, I have," and then somebody's like, "Hey, man, if you if you want to like, I don't know, get him to come to his senses, have him like step out of the lab." And so he does, and he's like, "Hey, hey man, I know you, you," and Mal's like, "Hey, I know you, you, you're good, you, you're cool." Anyway, and he's like, "Oh, what's what's going on here? Oh crap, something's crazy." Uh, listen, I know everything looks. A little weird right now. I mean, I know there's a guy that looks like freaking 
Michael J. Fox and and Teen Wolf, but well, I'll explain everything later. Right now, we have to go into town and uh, I don't know stop Frank and stop Punyani from getting himself killed. So yeah, everyone has to. So yeah, everyone suddenly embarks into the town. Jack, Gil, and Jack, Gil, and Mal hop into a car and they hit, drive over to the town. Punyani's carrying. Laura, she falls asleep, and uh, yeah, you got everyone else, the Wolfman, Odette, the Mummy still in the coffin, the Twisted Guy, Radu, Lupi, Feos, and uh, who, who else? Yeah, that's pretty much it, just those guys. Uh, basically, they hop into a carriage, and they have to, and they, and they go into the town, too, and uh, Basically, when Frankenstein arrives in the town carrying carrying Laura, everyone starts freaking out. He's like, "Oh my gosh, it's Frankenstein! He's back!" Everybody panic. Ah! But then Elizabeth, she's like, "Hey, hold on! What is that? She's my daughter!" And then, yeah, they thought they thought Frankenstein they thought Frankenstein killed her for a second, but no, she's asleep, so she's fine. And you got the pescu and the cops are there and they're like, and that was going on. And they have the they start lighting torches and I don't know, they start having them tied up about to burn them at the stake or whatever. Because, well, it's Frankenstein. But then Jack, Gil, and Mal show up and they're like, hey, come, hey, everyone, stop, stop what you're doing. Chill out. Let's just hear us out. We have a Perfectly good explanation as to why he looks like that. Yeah, you got Jack and Mal trying to ex explain it, but the crowd doesn't calm themselves. And so Jack, and so Gil's among the crowd, pretending to be people in the crowd. And he's like, hey, what's going on? Hey, let's hear him out. Yeah, let's, let's, he already has to say. Maybe, maybe it'll make sense. And everyone's like, all right, you know what? Yeah. Turns out the, and well, as they explain, turns out, Hunyadi was in a very freakish car accident. It kind of screws him up real bad and caused his caused a bunch of his body to be paralyzed. But you know that I don't know the government or whatever paid Malavakwa to I don't know give Hunyadi reconstructive surgery, but you know the mayor of the town and the the police force. You know what they you know what they do with the money? They kept it to themselves. And so and so uh Malavakwa decides to, I don't know, do it on his own terms. So basically he takes Hunyadi and does reconstruction surgery on him himself, giving him a giving him a metallic neck brace and uh, I don't know, using I don't know, some other tactics to I don't know, allow his body to move again, thus making him a Real life Frankenstein, and then he's like, but then Lepescu, and he's like, are we really going going to believe the testimony of a reporter and a madman? But then Gil kind of makes a mistake in talking, and it's like, yeah, no, I mean, yes, yes, yeah. But then it was too late, and then all of a sudden everyone starts, everyone starts rioting, and they try and take. But then the carriage with all the other with all the other characters show up, and everything get everything gets figured out the wolf the wolf man you know the fortune teller's son has a a weird condition where he's kind of just starts growing hair everywhere making him look like chewbacca you know and mal does like a is kind of putting him through a procedure kind of I don't know, removing the hair on his body, and it kind of, and it kind of works. He has like a, he has like a bald spot on his chest. Then yeah, everything checks out. Yeah. yeah, basically you got the, you know, the fortune teller lady. She's, she kind of categorizes her own son as a wolf man because she was ashamed of, you know, what he looks like, but. You know the two of them they they make up they hug yeah everything's cool then you got the 
Then you got the mummy, who was basically a Transylvania local who is who was good golly ugly, but that you know Mal did intense plastic surgery on her and you know kept the thing bandaged and had her locked in the coffin to keep her I don't know I don't know contained so that the thing could finish and because of that the mummy is now freaking gorgeous. So yeah, everything's pretty good. And uh, then you get the pescu, and then he's like, and then he's like, yeah, but what about, what about the Radu and Loopy? Yeah, you you two have like a have like a son, and and he's like, and yeah, yeah, apparently Radu and Loopy do have a son, and then he's like, Mama, Daddy, why why are you there? You making fun? Yeah, it turns out he was. Kind of slouching a little, and then, and then the two of them are there, and then Radu's like, "All right, man, you you got a lot of nerve talking to my son like that because he's because I've been I know I've been through a lot of from a lot of people considering I'm a I'm a butler, but I draw the line of you insulting my son. Shame on you." I, I love my son and I, I love my wife and that, that's that and you know that the two have a it was a very it was a very very touching moment how I, I like that part and that just leaves Odette who is now kind of hanging in the carriage and then Gil's there and she's like hey o Odette what's what's wrong and it's just like I'm, I'm, I don't know I'm scared I'm not a I'm not a real vampire. Takes off the fangs. I, I just I don't know made up being a vampire to kind of I don't know attract men. But yeah, now I'm now I'm uh, I'm I'm ugly. Yeah, I used that thing as a hoop, but yeah, I used to have a hideous nose. And then she's like, and then he's like, Ah, oh, come on, come on, Dad, come on, put yourself together. You're beautiful. What's it, what do you mean by the nose? It's perfect. But then I was like, Yeah, I, I gave her a nose job, so. Yeah, apparently all of Dead got was a nose job, so. Yeah, basically, um, basically there's another, there's a bit of a romantic scene where, you know, you got Gil and you got Odette, and uh, Odette kind of like shows his, her attraction towards Gil, and then at this this time, Gil's like, all right, you know what, I'm gonna go with it. And then they kiss, and everything's cool. So yeah, everything everything's pretty good. You got all these, you got all the, Guys being all the characters kind of being accepted, and everyone's at the wine festival having a good time. And as for La Pescu and the cops, I don't know, they don't seem they're not seen much after that. And then you got Jack and Gil, and then they're like, Hey man, hold, hold on, this is this is gonna be a real great story. We got this is a this is the story we need. This is this is good. Our jobs are gonna be sick. My dad is gonna have a Hell of a time with this story, and they take pictures, and the movie ends. So, so that was Transylvania Six Five Thousand. Yeah, I don't know where to begin. Yeah, first up, the story is a little. The story is a little, I don't know, lackluster, and I know the casting was pretty good, but yeah, other than that. A lot of the jokes in the movie are... Yeah, a lot of them are just overused jokes you see a lot on other comedies. And, uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just end up giving the movie a meh. So, uh, yeah. I guess that's it. Hold on. So, yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time. Happy Halloween!